Let's consider in a unary system the equilibrium between the condensed and vapor phases. So we know for a unary system that we can have a phase diagram which more or less looks like this with the solid, the liquid, and the vapor phases, and that the slopes of the coexistence curves, or these lines on the phase diagram, is given by this relationship here. So this is general, and this would describe any of these lines on this phase diagram. However, when we have the equilibrium between a condensed phase, which would be either the solid or the liquid, with the vapor phase, so that's this line here and this line here, we can simplify this equation a little bit. And we do that through this term delta V. So when we have a condensed phase and a vapor phase, then delta V is the difference between the volume of the vapor phase and the volume of the condensed phase. But really, the volume of the vapor phase is a lot greater than the volume of the condensed phase. And so we can approximate this delta V to just be the volume of the vapor phase. We can then use the ideal gas law to get at that. Right, so we know that V is equal to RT uh, divided by P for one mole. And so we can plug that in then to the Clapeyron equation. So now we have dP dt where the two phases are in equilibrium is delta H divided by T and then also divided by delta V, which we are now plugging in V of the vapor. So that looks like this. So the right-hand side is P delta H divided by RT squared. And we can do a little bit of rearranging and end up with an expression that says dP divided by P is equal to delta H over RT squared dt. So this equation here is sometimes known as the clausius clapeyron equation. And keep in mind that it only applies for equilibrium between the condensed and the vapor phase. It is sometimes written in this mathematically equivalent way, which says d ln of p is equal to delta h over rt squared dt. And we'll see in a minute why this is sometimes mathematically more convenient, right? But if you, if you were to integrate this side, you would get ln of p. Uh, so you can sort of write this as d ln of p. That's how that works out. So let's put this uh, clausius clapeyron equation to use a little bit and see how we can make it perhaps a little bit more user-friendly. So we can consider a couple of different approximations here when we're trying to use the clausius clapeyron So we'll consider first case is that delta H, so the delta H of the transformation is independent of temperature. So really that means that the, um, like the enthalpy of boiling going from liquid to vapor doesn't change with temperature. So if that's the case, then the relationship becomes like this once we do the integral. 
right? And if h is independent of t, then we can bring it outside of the integral, and we just end up with this kind of function. So this is now telling us, uh, compared to the sort of normal boiling point, let's say, and a pressure of one atmosphere, if we change the temperature, or if we change the pressure, rather, how does the transformation temperature change? One thing that we can see from this equation is that the vapor pressure, which is this P here, that vapor pressure increases exponentially with increasing temperature. So we see that the vapor pressure P increases exponentially temperature. So this uh, assumption that we made here, that delta H is independent of T, is not terrible. It's close, and it lets us see sort of clearly what the pressure temperature behavior is. But it isn't exactly right. Consider sort of a second case. And in the second case, we're going to say that the difference in the heat capacities between the vapor phase and the condensed phase is not equal to zero, which is what we uh, assumed in the first case. If delta H is zero, then the difference in heat capacities is also zero. But we are going to assume instead that it is equal to a constant. So this is still a little bit of an assumption here, because this might not necessarily be the case. But if we make that assumption, then delta H is allowed to be a function of T, and it is equal to delta H of that transformation at 298, because that's sort of our reference, plus the difference in heat capacities between that temperature and 298. And in this case, we end up with the following expression for P. where this is the difference in CPs at 298 minus delta H at 298 divided by R times 1 over T. And it's not important that you know this expression because we're going to see in a second how it simplifies into something that we actually can use. But this is more or less what happens if you use this assumption and plug it into the clausius clapeyron equation. So we get this, and that's fine, but it's not in a particularly useful format. And instead, this expression here is commonly expressed in the following way. So it says ln of p is negative a divided by t plus b ln of t plus c. And here, A, B, and C are material properties, basically. So this expression right here, okay, this is the equation for the vapor pressure as a function of temperature for a material. So there would be an expression, let's say, for the vapor pressure of solid copper. There would be a separate equation for the vapor pressure for liquid copper. And what's different is the values of A, B, and C. So A, B, and C are things that are tabulated in a handbook to let you get at this. So by making this assumption here about the... Uh, delta H for the transformation, we come to this sort of useful format for an equation for the vapor pressure as a function of temperature. So again, this is giving the equilibrium pressure for any temperature 
where the condensed phase and the vapor phase can coexist.